Welcome everyone, I'm sorry for the delay. We do apologize. Welcome to the City Council, Calexico Community Redevelopment Agency, Successor Agency, Calexico Financing Authority. Regular meeting, January 22nd, 2013. Ms. Lyons, if you can please give us the uh, legal report. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, council met in closed session and discussed items A through C. Um, direction was given, no reportable action was taken. Item D was removed from the closed session agenda. Thank you. Thank you. City Clerk, please note that all Council members are in attendance. And we are going to have our Pledge of Allegiance led by Mr. Ruben Niebla. Thank you. I need approval on the agenda, please. So moved. <coughs> Second. Thank you. Please vote. Motion carried, 4-1, thank you. We're gonna start off today's meeting with a couple of presentations. The first presentation was a presentation that uh, actually a recognition that I asked for. Um, there are three gentlemen in the city of Calexico and um, they're three brothers. Their names are Ruben, Jerry, and Gustavo Niebla. They happen to be my cousins and just recently there was a, um, a World Series in the city of Chula Vista, I believe, in Yuma. And um, there's a very interesting story on what happened and I'd, I'd like to quickly tell you um, Ruben, Gus, and Jerry have been very involved in sports for a very long time in the city of Calexico. And um, Ruben has gone off and done wonderful things in the professional world of sports and, and baseball, I understand. He's a uh, pitching coach for the Cleveland Indians at this point, which makes us very proud here in Calexico. Um, but just recently I read something that happened and I thought it was the most interesting story, so I figured I'd call him and not only just call him in and tell that story quickly, but also to recognize their efforts that they've made here in the city of Calexico and, and how much they've given back to the city of Calexico and the youth of the city. Um, basically what, what uh, Ruben has here in Calexico, I'm um, sorry, in Imperial Valley is Imperial Valley Baseball Network. And Imperial Valley Baseball Network, what it does is that it puts together lots of different kids from Imperial County to play baseball. And the majority of the kids, as far as I understand, are from the city of Calexico. They're around 18 or so uh, age, right, as far as this league was. And um, my other cousin, Gus, moved over to San Diego. So this, um, this, this, tournament that they had just recently in December, um, the circumstances were that towards the end, the last game was played by two different teams that their coaches were these brothers. Um, Ruben coaches then Imperial, Count, Imperial Valley Network, and they played against the team that's coached by Gus in San Diego. So they played for the, uh, the championship and Gus's team won in San Diego, but apparently you still placed, and that was an awesome, awesome accomplishment. Um, uh, Jerry, I think, was coaching the San Diego, even though he lives here, right? Okay, so it got a little confusing, but I thought that was really neat where they ended up at. I, I think you brought some of the kids to, uh, to get to know them and, and know that uh, hometown boys are, are still out there doing a lot in our community, not only in our community, but out in, in the region. And so I thought that it was really important to give you that special recognition today. So come on up. And I believe you might wanna. Are you, are you by yourself today? Ruben, I'm sorry, if you like, come on over to the, to the microphone, that way. Because uh -huh. we're recording and it won't record if you're not on the microphone. Um, my brother Jerry, obviously, he was uh, on the opposing team. Um, even though he, he is now currently the uh, varsity baseball coach here at Calexico High School, um, and he did have seven of his kids uh, playing against him in that, in that tournament. But uh, 
Uh, I'm going to introduce some of those guys right now, but but obviously, Jerry, if you can please stand up again and say, you know, um, introduce yourself, I guess. Come on, Jerry, come on up. <clears throat> Like I said, Jerry just took over the uh, the varsity team here at Calexico he, he, with the the high school team. So um, hopefully you guys go out there and, so, and show some uh, support. Um, we have here uh, five baseball players that that participated in that tournament. That tournament was awesome. It was a, it was a tournament that was. Uh, I think we were a little bit of in the underdogs as we went in there. We d definitely didn't expect to be where we were at the end. And um, one of the things that was the, mo the most special thing about that tournament, I think, was that uh, the championship games were going to be televised on ESPN. So we were able to give these kids, uh, these local kids, an opportunity to play in front of a national audience. And, and uh, they did an outstanding job. We ended up losing the uh, final game uh, in extra innings. Uh, so it was a great game. And uh, let me introduce you to some of the guys that participate. Uh, participated in that tournament. The first young man here, could you please stand up, Josh? Josh. Um, Josh, uh, Josh was one of our outfielders, and uh, you know he will also be playing out here at the var with the varsity team in Calexico. Have him come down here in front. Uh, go ahead, Josh. <laughs> They're looking good. Look at Next. them. Yeah, these guys look sharp right now. They're going to church after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, our next young man here is uh, Mr. Alex Ariola. Yeah, yeah. Cristian Navarrete. <laughs> Polo Gila Madrid. <laughs> and Nick Rivera. One of the things that uh, that really stood out for the team that I, you know I, I coached these guys and I didn't really have a relationship with them, but one of the things that really stood out is how professional they went about their business. Um, as you see them, they're they're a class act uh, group of players, and um, I'm I'm really looking forward to see what the, what kind of gentlemen they become in the future because it seems like they're heading in the right direction and and they obviously they know how to dress already so. Um, <laughs> But um, you know, the um, I think one of one of the messages that I wanted to send is that I see everybody that's up here, and I know most of the faces, uh, most of the people up here. Um, but it's uh, I, I consider everybody, every single one of us, is leaders of our community, and uh, hopefully we can give that tradition to our next generation. And this is our next generation, so I'm I'm really looking forward for these young men to grow up, and not only that, but us continue to give them the opportunity to grow up. Um, so I really thank you guys for having us here tonight. Uh, this is great. And again, I, I have been in professional baseball 18 years. I am a pitching coach in the major leagues. Um, but Calexico, is this, is this is where my heart's at. This is where I was born and raised. Obviously, you guys know my dad, Guillermo Niebla, who's standing, he's in the crowd right now. Um, So this is where I'm from. Every year, uh, you know, I come back and I spend six months here, and I try to do as much as I can for the community. And uh, so, if any any time I can help you guys with anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Don't leave. Don't leave. I want to just quickly uh, read the recognition. It's short but uh, sweet. City Calexico recognition two. Ruben. Gustavo and Jerry Niebla, in recognition for your commitment, generous contributions, and outstanding achievement in promoting and coaching youth sports. Marit Hurtado, Mayor.
Thank you. I always wanted to do something like that. <laughs> Nobody more deserving than, than you, Ruben. Okay, thank you. On to our next presentation, item B on our agenda is a presentation by Mr. Jeff Kinzel with Kinzel Newcomb and De Dios Incorporated regarding new port of entry progress. Ms. Duarte, uh, Duarte, sorry. Ms. Uh, 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 I can excuse myself. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, I'm Jeff Kinsel, Kinsel Newcomb and De Dios, 2776 Gateway Road, Carlsbad. And uh, I have uh, with me here tonight uh, someone who doesn't need uh, rec uh, introduction, uh, Victor Carrillo, who has been working with me on this project now for about two years and has absolutely been invaluable in, in the process. And um, I ask him to come here tonight uh, if we have any questions as we go through this. Uh, his knowledge of the, the, the local flavors is, is invaluable to me. And I uh, wanted to congratulate the baseball players. They're a hard act to follow. <laughs> but uh, uh, we have put together a little presentation that is on the, um, the screen in, in front. And I think what I'd like to do is, is to, to just go th through this. This presentation has been uh, prepared with a very broad audience, uh, intended audience. And um, um, so much of this may seem uh, redundant and, and, and information you already know, but uh, we'll go, th go through it anyway. Um, <clears throat> about uh, two years ago, we discovered that uh, uh, as we were watching what was going on with GSA, uh, that uh, it was apparent that uh, they, were, they, GSA, was not going to have the money to build the project with the normal procurement process that the federal government goes through for GSA-sponsored projects. Um, and <clears throat> as, as we began looking at that, we started looking at the factors involved. And I will tell you that uh, uh, there was a study that was done um, uh, in, I believe, in 2009, Caltrans study, that shows that the area suffers a $1.2 billion annual economic loss from the wait times and the, and the inefficient uh, uh, border crossing. The uh, time delays um, with the GSA, GSA has been studying this project. I think they've spent about $30 million in architectural plans and specs for the downtown port, land acquisition, and otherwise since about 2007. It's estimated to be now about a $340 million project and uh, we have been told that, uh, that the earliest phase one, which is about 90 million, and uh, I wouldn't even call it a third of the project, probably won't be available at, until the earliest, of 2000, the fiscal year 2016. So delivery of the first phase would be 2017. Um, Generally, what GSA will tell you is that, that the balance of the uh, funding would come a couple years later. So <clears throat> I think it's a fair statement that, uh, that uh, the people from GSA will tell you that it is into the 2020s uh, before this project will be delivered uh, with a traditional procurement process that, that GSA and the federal government go through. Um, we have outlined a number of things, deficiencies in the current, uh, primarily the downtown uh, uh, port of entry. Uh, we label it here a national security threat. Uh, I don't know, many of you know this, but literally this is one of the few border crossings along the, the uh, U.S. border, either north or south, that literally the facilities are right on the border. There's not 150, the downtown facility, there's not usually the 150 to 200 yards of pre-screening that takes place. And, and literally the threat, the security threat is, is that cars can get within one or two car links of, of the, the uh, check facilities uh, before there is authorization to check them. Um, 
I guess I don't have to tell you about uh, the, you know, the environmental and, and social issues, the idling cars, the pollution it causes, um, the, uh, the sort of the social impact that is that uh, that many people have to suffer uh, standing in line f uh, during the extreme heats of of, of this area. Um, Another, another consideration right now is, is that unlike uh, many other facilities that have been board, uh, built along the U.S.-Mexican border over the years, is, is that we, f we find that, that uh, literally the, the improvements on the south side of the border have virtually been completed and are awaiting the uh, facilities on the U.S. So there's some pressure uh, from um, the, what is equivalent to the, the Mexican State Department on our State Department to, and, and others to get it done. Um, if you turn to the next page, thank you. The, the solution that we have been working on, and I will tell you that when it was first mentioned to GSA officials here and in San Francisco and, and even in Washington, D.C., we've met with them, uh, that um, um, private-public partnerships was what we have recommended, which is essentially bringing uh, a, a private entity together with a uh, with a public entity, a local, a, a governmental entity, entity to get a project done. Here we're putting sort of a, an interesting twist on it. What we're proposing is, is that our private group partner with some of the local agencies, the county, the city, hopefully, the uh, local transportation committee, to form a joint venture to propose to the federal government that, that uh, we're able to make these improvements with, with private dollars sooner rather than later. And <clears throat> the, um, the problem that we have is, is that the private-public partnerships have been used many, many times across the country on what I'll call uh, vertical uh, uh, projects, hospitals, courthouses, um, office buildings, FBI, DAA, many of those buildings that are occupied by those uh, federal agencies have been built by private, uh, uh, by the private world and, and leased to those agencies, never a land port of entry. And um, um, we're working on both working, uh, uh, working on a process to work with the current GSA rules and regulation that would allow us to move forward to do a land port of entry private-public partnerships partnership, but in addition to that, um, uh, have been involved very heavily with legislation that has been introduced in both the Senate and the House. Uh, and given the election and, 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 every, and the, the fiscal crisis, the fiscal cliff and everything that was going on in, in the summertime through the fall, uh, it, uh, it didn't get much traction, but we do believe there is significant uh, will in Washington to make something happen, either within the current set of regulations or with new legislation. Um, one of the... Um, one of the, the reason we believe that GSA under feasibility, we, the reason we believe that GSA will, will take heed is that we believe that we can bring some new financial support to the situation. And one of the things that we will be doing when we propose to GSA is suggesting that some of the commercial traffic, the trucks and others who are waiting in line at the East Port for hours and hours, uh, to, uh, to pay a fee to cross and uh, in return for uh, potentially expanded operating hours and uh, additional lanes uh, uh, for traffic. That also is, is very helpful and we get a lot of traction with that uh, at the state level because both the CHP and Caltrans is, are very interested in seeing that truck traffic uh, take place at night uh, uh, rather than exclusively during the day. As I understand it, the, the, the facilities close down, Victor helped me, six, 6 or 8 o'clock in the evening and don't open until 6 o'clock the next morning. So it would, be, it would be great if we could figure out a way through this uh, organization and this new revenue stream to have expanded, uh, have expanded hours and expanded capacity. Uh, 
what we've been trying to do to, uh, to get, would you switch to the next page, please, uh, is try to get as much local support as we can and, and working on efforts in Washington, D.C. to get um, local support. We have been able to get resolutions of support uh, uh, for the private-public partnership concept from the State Assembly. We got one from the State Senate. We got one about a month ago from Sandag. Imperial County uh, appro approved one probably eight or nine months ago, and I think the city's uh, uh, resolution was maybe, I lose track of time, but maybe six months ago. But we have resolutions of intent so that when we go to Washington, we can, we can, we can um, portray the amount of local support and, and, and trying to, to uh, indicate the, the uh, uh, need uh, in the area. Um, that has resulted in uh, indications of, of assistance from a number of people. We have several congressional members, uh, House members, that have indicated a, a strong willingness to get behind and either help push at GSA or help with the new proposed legislation if necessary. The Border Trade Alliance, which is a group of local governments, as well as businesses that are located generally along the U.S., the 2000 area along the, the uh, Mexican-U.S. border. Uh, there's an association of border counties that we've gone to who have been very active in, in this process. We have various chambers of commerce who've, uh, um, uh, who've sort of bought in, if you will, and, and have indicated interest. Those include, uh, uh, I, I don't mention, I call them chambers of commerce, but places like the, the uh, Farm Bureau and, and, and others. Uh, and we have, we don't have anything in writing, but we have talked to a number of the commercial shippers and others to get their support uh, and, their, and, and an indication of willingness uh, to participate uh, in this process. Um, Next page, please. Um, the consideration that we, that we have laid out there is, is the formation of, um, uh, I don't know, many of you have heard that uh, what was called a joint powers authority. Under California law, local governmental agencies can form an, 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 a new entity called a joint powers authority and exercise any powers that are consistent among its members. And uh, what we're hoping to do is to reach out to the city uh, uh, and to tomorrow evening to the Transportation Committee. We, have, uh, we already have the, the county on board on this, but to reach out to the city and to the Transportation Committee to uh, suggest a formation of this Joint Powers Authority um, so that the thought process being that the, the county has the jurisdictional area of the east port. The city is clearly the, the jurisdictional area of the downtown port, which has the greatest need and has the greatest, the longest uh, uh, period of study. And the Transportation Commission, uh, which has representation because it is a regional, uh, regional um, uh, project, we believe, at the end of the day, it has representation from all of the cities in the county and the county. So that everybody, uh, uh, the two primary uh, uh, entities, the city and the county, would have a full seat at the table, but the ICTC would bring, and so that every, all the cities from around the county uh, would, would have a voice. Um, I guess that's uh, um, uh, really uh, what I wanted to say. The, the, the county has approved a memorandum of understanding with our group. It is our intention to put together a proposal. We've had contractors working with us to come up with cost estimates. We've been running numbers. We've been running feasibility. We've hired uh, uh, real estate consultants. We've hired groups back in Washington to help us who are, are, are um, experienced in, in putting together these kinds of proposals to GSA. Uh, and it is our intention to put in a proposal to GSA in late February, early March uh, uh, to get some sort of response uh, from them. And what we're hoping to do is, is uh, that that proposal will go in in the name of uh, a new joint powers authority. I think I think the name that we've chosen, I, not chosen, but it's been suggested, would be the uh, Imperial Valley Port Authority. Um, 
but we hope that that agency uh, will comprise of not only the county, as I said, but also the city and the Transportation Commission. And um, I, I guess that's, uh, that's where we are. Uh, we, hope to, we hope to have that proposal there within 30 to 45 days. And, and uh, I would guess it would take some time for them to respond to that, but uh, um, I don't know how long. It's sort of a new ball game for GSA. As I said, they've never done a land port of, uh, uh, land port of entry before like this. So uh, what the response time will be, we don't know, but we do know that it will be faster than the 2020s. So I'll answer any questions. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, first let me state that uh, Mayor Hurtado uh, had a pressing need. There's nothing of emergency kind. It was something she had to take care of right away. So uh, her apologies for having to leave, so I will be taking over the reins. We have the lights on. Thank you, uh, Council. Uh, this is not a drill session. This is just uh, some concerns or questions you have about this project. So, uh, Councilman Castro, would you like to begin? Any questions you have, sir? Uh, yes, uh, <coughs> you mentioned then that uh, rather, than, rather than later, how, how, how long, how many months or years do you think this project is gonna work if we decide to support this project? I don't know how long it's going to take. I, I wish I could give you a, a, a good answer. I, do, I don't know. Um, I, I, it, sure, please. Good evening, Honorable City Council. And that's an excellent question, Mr. Castro. In essence, uh, I'll try to be brief, if possible. GSA has been zeroed out since 2009. They had already received $23.9 million from 2005 through 2009 for site acquisition, presidential permits, environmental studies, and, and what have you, and, uh, and community outreach, et cetera, and right of way acquisition. Since 2009, when Barack Obama was into his first year as president, uh, there was gridlock and a stalemate in Congress where they wanted to cut spending. So all projects, GSA had 300 projects that totaled about $60 billion throughout the country for ports of entries, for federal buildings, et cetera. The first phase was scheduled to start in 2011, in September of 2011, and be completed, that was 10 lanes, by this spring. But because they haven't received any money, and for this year, the, for the presidential budget, GSA didn't make that requisition again for the typical procurement or appropriation. Uh, it most likely it'll be 2016 before the federal government will consider appropriating money for Calexico. San Isidro, which is halfway through their project, they still need about 500 more million to complete the San Isidro crossing they would probably be first in the priority list for California. What we're proposing is an alternative funding option in lieu if GSA doesn't get their funding. So if we can get legislation amended this year and that Circular A, policy, Circular A 11 policy that works as a checks and balances for the federal government on procurement, if we can get that amended, that gives GS, GSA the permission to enter into a public-private partnership, then we would have to bid, like every other company, to see if we win that contract. We, I say, would be the County of Imperial that's already approved an MOU for this calendar year till December 31st. We've extended an invitation to the city of Calexico We'll, we're extending uh, an invitation to the Imperial County Transportation Commission that's made up of one elected body member uh, from each city council and two supervisors from the Board of Supervisors. GSA says that it would take them four years to build a port of entry if they receive their money typically in the appropriation. Right now we're looking at 2020 for that to happen, where the port of entry would be built. 
if we can get this, this approach approved, we would look within the next 12 to 18 months to build, to, to go through the process, and then it would take 24 months to 36 months to build it all out in one complete phase. And you could probably save about 15% of the total cost. That would be anywhere from 20 million to 35 million on the overall uh, cost for the project. One, you would mobilize about 5,000 to 6,000 workers in construction related fields because that's what it would take to build a port of entry. Two, you wouldn't have to demobilize after the first phase and then have to remobilize for the second phase of the additional lanes plus the pedestrian crossing that they're going to expand from five turnstiles to 12 turnstiles. And, uh, and this way, it would be a win-win-win for everybody. Our hotels, our retail economy downtown and throughout the Imperial Valley would benefit. In 2009, 2010, we've had 300 empty homes or rooftops in Calexico. The construction workers that were hired outside of the valley as, as well as those that would be hired from the valley could possibly rent those or buy those during that period of construction. And, uh, and so the sales tax would, be, uh, would, be, would receive direct impact as well as potential property tax. And, uh, and, and so we've embarked on this effort because it was time for, in my opinion, to do something from within. If we didn't take the lead and try to take care of our own house here in the Imperial County, the Imperial Valley, and the city of Calexico, and offer this alternative funding option as an approach for the government to consider, then we would be doing our part. The city of Calexico would benefit immensely, so would the county of Imperial and the entire Imperial Valley and the region. Uh, this is the second busiest port in California, the third busiest port of entry along the southwest border encompassing 24 counties, two in California, four in Arizona, three in New Mexico, and 12 in Texas. And as a result, um, we would have to uh, you know, embark in this effort. We started this effort in May of 2011. There was uh, not resistance, but they thought it would never happen but they never realized that they weren't going to get the funding. And in the last eight months, GSA has looked at it very favorably because, as I mentioned, they have 300 projects. That means there's 300 project engineers and architects and managers that could be out of a job if that funding doesn't come because it won't be needed. And so uh, we wanted to present it to you in this fashion and have you consider it and if you'd like, and we, the invitation has always been there for the city of Calexico to become a partner in this MOU, this memorandum of understanding. It's not going to obligate the city financially. Uh, Kinzel Nukem de Dios will be financing or funding the effort in Washington to get the policy changed. And there's no liability or risk for the County of Imperial or any other public entity that wishes to join this endeavor. Okay, so basically you're talking about four years, right? Three to four, well, we need to get the funding first. So in all simplicity, in 25 words or less, what we're proposing is to finance it through the sale of bonds, construct it utilizing GSA as the construction management team for the integrity and security of the project. We're not changing any of their plans. And then servicing the debt over 20 to 40 years, depending on how long GSA wants to engage in the contract for that, that would be paid back by the Homeland Security and CBP, their annual budgeted lease payments that they make to GSA today. They're the tenants for the port of entry. GSA is the landlord. General Services Administration builds the federal or government buildings. And then they lease them out to whoever's going to occupy it. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Councilman Moreno. I noticed that on the presentation that this is the first of its kind 
type of, of a public-private partnership with the land port of entry. What obstacles or perhaps resources do you see in the future that may or may not allow it to happen? I, 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 when it's the first of its kind, I, I think it, it'll, you know, it, it's, it's new ground. So can you shed some light on that? Well, that's another good question, Mr. Moreno. Six times, well, the average age of ports of entries along the southwest border is 45 to 50 years of age. The Calexico port of entry was designed in the late 60s under Lyndon Johnson, and it was built during uh, President Nixon's watch, and I think it opened up in 1971 or 72. GSA and the federal government have always funded their projects. But there were six occasions where there was a port of entry that wasn't going to receive its full amount to, uh, to construct. And you can't start a government building, a project, any building, until you have 100% of the money for that phase. It's not like if we wanted to remodel our home or buy a car or we go to a financing institution or a bank and we borrow and we make payments. GSA the federal, has to wait till they get the money, just like with our road projects here, or the city of Calexico. So that being said, in the 11th hour of those six ports of entries that we're, we're going to experience renovation, the money was appropriated. So they never had to go this route. Second obstacle is that with a presidential permit, a port of entry is only designed to serve as a port of entry. A federal courthouse, a DEA building or FBI building, if they built it 10 floors with 10 offices on each floor, and over the years they only needed to occupy 20 offices and two floors, well, they could lease out the remaining eight floors. Or at the end, or if they decided they no longer needed it and they were gonna abandon the building, they could sell it to the local government or a private entity. But a port of entry, you can't sell it. You can't convert it into a shopping center. It's always going to be a port of entry. And unfortunately, since 9-11 and 2001, with a tragedy in, in New York, and then in 2003, Homeland Security was created and the consolidation of customs and immigration to create customs border protection and with the invent of new technology for terrorist search and what have you, that new technology was not compatible with the existing ports of entry. So it was like throwing money down a dark hole. And as Mr. Kinzel pointed out, the Calexico port of entry downtown is unique among other ports of entries on both borders with Canada or Mexico in that where this port of entry connects the two, town, the two downtowns and Calexico's is right on the border line where when you drive up, you're two cars away. So if anybody wanted to load a vehicle with, with bombs, I hope it never happens. You know, they could cause a lot of destruction and a lot of damage and a lot of death. That's why they proposed, they started in 2003 and in 2005, uh, John Ballard was assigned to this project in 2003. By 2005, they had site control, were looking for site control and everything else and drawing up plans. And it's going to be at the former commercial gate, which is located about three blocks west of the existing downtown port. And it'll be set back about 150 to 200 yards. So when you cross the border, you'll be in the U.S., but you'll have about 100. 50 yards before you get to the inspection booth. Kind of like the uh, East Port, uh, similar to that. Something like that. I have no more questions. Okay, um, let me see. Could, could you elaborate exactly what, it, what does this MOU do? What the memorandum, and I'll have Jeff come up and, and, and support my response. What the memorandum of understanding does is it's united the county of Imperial and Kinsel Nukem de Dios to, it gives us standing so that when we go back to Washington or Sacramento, we say we're representing 
the County of Imperial in lobbying to see for hopefully for you to change the policy. There's no fiscal risk from the county. We're footing, the, we're paying for, paying for the endeavor. Uh, I would say we're in the third quarter of a fourth quarter, a four quarter game. We're like in the seventh inning of a nine inning baseball game since we recognize those fine young men and the Niebla family for baseball, but we're getting closer. And, uh, and so in essence, what we're looking for right now within the next six months to 12 months or this calendar year is to get the legislation amended to allow GSA to enter into this proposal for a public, for a port of entry. They can already, already do it for other buildings. The I, I, I raise that question, uh, not so much on my behalf, but some other people have had concern, or I see there was a misunderstanding thinking that this particular company had already had the deal. And was no, 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 no. I know that, but I'm just, that's why I've asked for your clarification. And just let me uh, close out that, my, my answer. If everything falls into place and the federal government agrees to amend and allow this to happen, then we, with the county and whoever else participates, or are, would have to go out to bid. We'd have to submit a bid like anybody else. And there's no guarantee that we would get it. That's a risk we're taking. But nobody is doing anything about it right now and in, we're trying to get that effort. With the critical area of getting the GSA to right. change the rules and regulations so yeah. that this can happen. It's just like going to a dance and you're, you've been, it's been a long you've, time. Accept, you've accepted, but you're waiting to see if somebody else, a, a better partner is gonna come and ask you, or there's gonna be another, another dance that you can go to, you know. But somebody has to pay, somebody has to pay the dance, the, the dance leader, the band leader, right? Yeah. And somebody has to find a venue for where that dance is going to be. And that's what we're doing. Uh, well, I certainly support this public and private partnership. And I'm in agreement with you that it's, it doesn't look too good for the federal government to come through. There are some concerns, and if you'll permit me. Uh, I'm going to say this so that it allows you to clear the air. Uh, there, there are some people. Uh, that have a perceived notion among us that, that we sort of as a city have been designated sort of to the back seat in this project. Uh, you, you, uh, you mentioned taking the lead and in this project, that, uh, that proper respect has not been given to the city when especially this push for the private-public partnership in Calexico and also understanding the Eastport, but in Calexico should be led by Calexico or, or at least um, there's just some people that feel that uh, you haven't come to us and, and, and we've collaborated at a start together. But uh, I want to give you that opportunity to counter that argument. Okay, well, that's that a good... Is true or not? It's, or not? It, it's not true. And I, I with all, with all uh, respect, Mayor Pro Tem Hodge, as I mentioned, we started this in May of 2011. My role was to be the table setter. In essence, I set up meetings with local stakeholders, city council members, uh, members of the Board of Supervisors, Chambers of Commerce, Farm Bureau, Colab, the Imperial Valley Economic Development Commission. We met individually so that we wouldn't violate the Brown Act. This was May, June, July. I didn't meet specifically with each council member. There were other members of our team that met with different council members while we were meeting at the same time. If I was meeting at Carroll's, for example, another member of the team was meeting at uh, Applebee's or uh, Family Buffet, so to speak. Calexico was always first and foremost in the, on the invitation list and included. At the time, Calexico had an ad hoc committee that they provided, and it was the sitting mayor, Mr. Daniel Romero, and your mayor pro tem, Maritza Hurtado, at that time, along with the city manager. You also had your chief of police, Jim Nujar, along with the uh, chairman of the 
of the Border Ad Hoc Committee called to Hargrave in attendance. We also had the president or chairperson of the BID, the Business Improvement District, Eduardo Lalo Lopez. We had weekly or bi-monthly meetings. We always kept everybody up to date on what was going on and invited to the table. Secondly, because of those meetings with the stakeholders, we received first letters of support. When we went back to Washington in July of 2011, we took letters to meet with the appropriators, to meet with a hierarchy of GSA, uh, to meet with uh, senators and what have you, people that were related to the border and those that were involved in appropriations. They asked us to expand our group of stakeholders. We came back to solidify that and continued meeting. Then our next step was to get uh, resolutions. We received resolutions from the County of Imperial, the City of Calexico. Uh, Mayor Romero at the time took the City of Calexico resolution to the Borders Committee of Sandag. They recommended it to the Board of Directors of the Regional Council of Sandag. They approved that December 21st of 2012. We had joint resolutions provided by the State Assembly and the State Senate with, one, with Senator Juan Vargas. And so now we had that to take back to Washington. But Calexico has always uh, been included and we've met. If for whatever reason uh, the parties weren't able to meet, that was beyond my control. But uh, was Calexico excluded? Never. Have they always been welcomed? Yes, and I would say 100% welcome. All right, thank you very much, duly noted. One more, regardless of what developer takes the lead and does this construction, if it happens, do you foresee at any time in any way that the city of Calexico, if something goes wrong or a left turn is made instead of a right turn, that would be holding the bag or possibly liable? Right now, under the current MOU that we have with the county, no. There's no fiscal. Now, if that process is approved, if the concept is approved, yes. and then the next step, I believe, and Jeff, you can correct me if I'm mistaken, would, to be, would be to form that joint power authority, that JPA, with the parties that are involved. But the financing would be the selling of bonds for construction. The city of Calexico, in my knowledge, or the county of Imperial, would not be asked to put up any money. Am I mistaken, or is that correct? <clears throat> then, as I said, the construction would, would be, the management team would be GSA for the integrity and security of the project. And then the payments to pay off the investors who, on those bonds, to service the debt, would be the lease payments the normal lease payments that CBP makes now to GSA, that they have allocated. As you remember in the meeting that we had with Congressman Vargas on Friday, uh, he referred to them as being enterprise funds, okay? Or like what we know as the revolving loan, uh, like under redevelopment in the state of California. So when, when the redevelopment agency would lend a constituent $50,000 for a housing rehab, that was taken from a special fund. When that person made their payments, their loan payments, back to the redevelopment agency, that, that money went into a, a, a special fund that it could only be used for future loans. It couldn't be used for a general fund. It couldn't be used to pay salaries, et cetera. And that's how, you know, I, the devil's in the details. I'm not the one that's gonna be the architect of that, but, but to my understanding, the, li the, li the county, the city, ICTC would not be liable. Jeff, do you want to elaborate on that? The only thing I would add is, is that we are <clears throat> really asking the city to join a team and to have a voice in who that team is. And it includes us. We've, brought, we've, we've spent a lot of money on lobbyists. We've spent a lot of money on consultants. We've spent, we've spent a lot of time working with contractors to put together construction numbers for a bid, or not a bid, but for a proposal to GSA. 
but how that propose, what it finally looks like, we would like the city to be our partner in that and, and what it looks like, because it is going to be part of a competitive process that we have to go through with GSA. And so we're most anxious to have the city be front and center and inside the tent with us so that we have your voice when that proposal goes in rather than on the outside so that we have to answer to you why did it go look like this or why did it look like that. That's, that's why we're here. We're here tonight to ask for your participation in that process with us and because it is, it's not just I'm an investment banking firm, but this is, this is not just about selling bonds. We may not sell bonds. We may get a loan of some other kind. This is about getting the project done. It's about finding the right contractor. It's, it's about finding the right managers. And there may be some operational issues here. It's about putting together a team that gets GSA to say yes, yes. quickly. All right, thank you, Mr. Kenzel. I think it's also about fixing our border. That's that's what yes means. <laughs> <coughs> One more comment, Mr. Carrillo? No. Does anybody else have questions? No. I think we've exhausted that. Thank you very much. And thank you for, for your presentation and, and your time. And the invitation is open. And Mr. Carrillo, you're well detailed and knowledgeable. Did you write a book on this, sir? No? I think you quoted a paragraph from it on Friday. <laughs> May I ask just? One, one point of, of, of order, and, and I know that your agenda item doesn't allow you to take any action. But we literally want to get this underway and this proposal to GSA as soon as possible. I assume everybody in the world, wants, in this part of the world, wants that to happen. And so I was going to ask uh, uh, council if we were to bring back a form of a joint powers authority at another meeting so it could be considered. Is, is, is that so that we don't have to go, we don't have to come back to two more councils? Can we bring it back in, with one? One uh, with one additional time for approval. I'm just. It's up to the council members. If they request something on the agenda, then what they request gets put on the agenda. Uh, okay. Well, I guess what I'm asking then the council is: is that this was an information setting? Can we come next back time. with an action item next time sure. for, for for your approval or rejection? I don't sure. care, but that's what we'd sure. like to do. Yeah, we'll, I think so. We'll I definitely think. consider. We'll that. consider that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Direction given. <coughs> Rodriguez. For the next meeting, direction given. Fine. Okay, that ends the presentations, ladies and gentlemen. Try to move on quickly. I know some of you are waiting to go home and watch the novella. Just kidding. Okay. So you're not you're serious. What what is the big novella going on these days? Can someone tell me the name of it? They're all. They're all. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, go to public appearances, public comments. Am I right? Yes. Okay, uh, this is the time for the public to address the council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city of Calexico. The mayor will not, will recognize you and when you come to the microphone, please state your name and place of residence for the record. Now, while members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful to disturb or delay the council meeting with personal or slanderous remarks. If the item you wish to comment on is a closed session or consent item, please comment now. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, if the item you wish to comment on is on the public portion of the agenda, we will take your comment when we get to the item on the agenda. So please direct your questions and comments to the city council. So I have a list here. Let me see here. Um, uh, we can begin with, uh, I don't know if this is the proper order, so Daniel Fitzgerald, if, uh, public comments, sir. Good evening, council members. Daniel Fitzgerald. 
I just wanted to come before the council. Um, as many of you may know, I have, uh, I've since moved on and I'm, I'm now going to be managing the Imperial Valley Enterprise Zone out of Brawley, and I've taken that position um, and, no, and have resigned my position here in, in Calexico. I wanted to thank the council members and thank the community for my time here and being able to work here in the city of Calexico. A uh, number of you council members I've worked with for a number of years, uh, even traveled, being able to promote this area. I see great things in the future for Calexico, and I wish nothing but the best, but I wanted to thank the city for, for my time here. All right. Well, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Good luck. Yeah. Keep in touch. Next, um, public. Uh, I believe it's Laura Vargas. Is Laura Vargas in the house? Do I am I? No. Is that is this right? Can you read that right? Yeah, you're right. Community service? No. Oh, no? Okay, moving on. Uh, we have an issue uh, for public comment uh, pertaining to bus stop. Josephine Luna. Josephine, have you? Thank you for being patient. Good evening. My name is Josephine Luna, 1154 Obelisco Street here in Calexico. Um, good evening, council members. I'm at a loss for words because I am exhausted at trying to find some solution to a problem our family has been dealing with for years. This is regarding the transit systems. I'm not going to single out any particular transit system for there are numerous transit systems in violation, not just one. The violation is the picking up and dropping off of passengers at this address, 1061 Heber Avenue, where my parents reside. We have three caregivers, a nurse, a blood mobile that comes and goes throughout the day plus my brother and sisters, nieces and nephews that go and come to assist and visit as well throughout the whole day and nights. These buses continue to block the driveway, making it impossible for cars to go into the driveway. Therefore, we have to block traffic and wait for buses to leave, or we go around the block. We had a bus pull out one day, and we were lucky he pulled away in time for the ambulance to go into our driveway. This issue has been brought up before. I've called transit systems, sent pictures, emails, and you might ask why we have not been here to express this problem. The reason is we have chosen not to come to a meeting because this is a time that we spent with our parents. Our father passed Saturday. Those three minutes to load and unload those buses, multiplying it by 10, a low number, is 30 minutes. Those are 30 minutes that were taken away from us the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, to be with my father. These bus drivers should be fined, better yet fired, for breaking regulations, and employers should be fined as well. If the employer cannot control what their employees, drivers do, then they have no business running a business. Every business and workplace has rules and regulations. My father was also a businessman, and he did things the right way. We have addressed this issue with our family attorney, and we will hold these bus transits liable, as well as the city of Calexico, for not enforcing these businesses to comply with regulations. If emergency services are unable to access this home, we still have our mother who is not well, and we the family, as well as emergency services, come and go to this home. I hope this matter will be resolved as soon as possible. We had emergency services at this residence on Saturday when my father passed when a bus stopped at this drive, the same driveway. A police officer who was there instructed him to move on. There was buses that stopped today as well, and there was two people, passengers, waiting as my sister and I drove up to this meeting. And like I say, it's been years. We've been at this for years, and we hope that some resolution will come out of this tonight. Thank you. Mr. City Manager, can we we're sorry for your loss. Can we uh, accommodate? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look into it. Did I get the address correct? 1051 Heber Avenue? I thought I heard 1061. 1061? Okay. Okay. Mr. Mohammed, excuse, excuse yes. me. Can I make a question to the lady? 
Uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, at what time does this bus stop by and, and pick up, or I believe they pick up and drop off passengers? At what time? This is you all tell? day long. All day long? All day long. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. You can sit out there and there'll be buses that stop and go, stop and go. But uh, It's like being in Mexicali. It's like, pro probably here I am. The, the passengers, they raise their hands. Passengers and, and drop-offs. Uh-huh. Yeah, but most likely what time? The one I want to talk about. There isn't a certain time. This goes on all day long. Like all I said, we were coming here today at 6.15, and there was two people waiting. Mm -hmm. They're either waiting out in the front, especially in front of the, the driveway. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, Mr. Mohammed, public comment, please. <clears throat> Good evening, Councilman. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Calexico population on a daily basis, uh, I believe it's more than what it is. I, you know, I don't know, know the exact number. But I believe uh, Calexico need to apply for more federal and state money for at least more 30 police officers. I think we lack the officers. I used to sit on the police advisory board in El Centro, and we had 54 officers. Calexico, with the traffic and with the shoppers and with the workers, I believe uh, we need to maintain more a control of our safety and, and citizens and the problems we have as a border town. This is an issue I think we've been overlooking. And uh, these things, uh, you know, I, I think the safety of the citizens and the children is in stake because we have many people comes and goes every day. So I think with the 30 officers on our police force is not sufficient. Uh, the other things I think we need to have a, a, a leadership in the city to push for more development, accountability on our staff. Uh, I walk in the streets on the west side, I feel like I'm in third world countries. The streets are so cracked, so bad. I don't know where our city uh, directors. We need to take a pictures and maybe, maybe take a look. Some of the trees are dying. We plant trees and we leave them and we hope they will grow by themselves. But some of them dry and need to be cut, you know. Uh, I believe we have a lot of money out uh, for business licensing. Over 700,000 need to be collected. So we need a, a strong leadership here. We need to improve our Highway 98 on the, from the east to the west. Because if you look, we need to attract more things. You know, city like Calexico border town, it need to attract, uh, you know, snowbird uh, businesses and things. And we need to keep the businesses that is open, to keep them open. Uh, if we keep, keep going the way we're going, we're going to be very soon as a ghost town. Uh, uh, you know, we need to attract more businesses. We need to work on, on more businesses. We need to make sure our uh, city is safe and our children is safe and our community. I'm asking this council tonight to make an official invitation to the governor, to the assemblyman, and the congressman and the senator to visit our city. And we need to appeal straight to, to the officials because it's, it's very urgent to take an action. And I believe with this councilman, it can be done. Thank you. Thank you very much for your pertinent comments. OK, that concludes the, oh, I'm sorry, Sean Johnson. Public comment, sir? I want to make a comment. Uh, good evening. My name is, uh, uh, first, give respect to the city officials of Calexico. Uh, my name is Sean Johnson. I'm along with uh, Miss Jean Montenegro. Uh, I've been involved in sports uh, in the city of Calexico for more than uh, 10 years. Uh, throughout the valley, more than 15 years. Uh, about four years, <coughs> excuse me, about three years ago, I took on a, a project called the um, Imperial Valley Knights. It's our first uh, minor league football team here. And the reason I decided to do it is because I played on the last football team at IBC. 
Ever since then, there's been no football program. We have a lot of good athletes in the Imperial Valley. And a lot of these kids, when they get out of high school, if they don't make it to a big college, they either end up wasting away and become problems of the law or just not doing anything with themselves. But this is a way where they can, they can showcase their skills and also still attend Imperial Valley College. Now, um, from last year, we sent two people to college, um, Cal State San Bernardino. One of them is in Oregon, which is a, a young man from Calexico. And we had one quarterback, you probably read about Hector Ayala, that went to uh, play quarterback in the European League. So I feel this is a worthy cause, and what I would like to do is get the whole valley involved. I'm starting in Calexico. We have players from all over the valley, Calexico, Imperial, uh, Brawley, Calipat, even uh, the Mexicali Valley, which is why we call the uh, team the Imperial Valley Knights. Uh, Mr. Moreno uh, announced our game last Saturday. He could tell you the competition we play against. And <clears throat> for years, it was proven that, they, well, they thought that they had to recruit uh, players from other cities, other states, Ohio. I witnessed that. Uh, but we have a lot of talent. I mean, Brawley proves that. They always uh, go into San Diego to play for the uh, a championship. So. That's what I'm trying to do, is to continue this program. Uh, everything that we do is based on donations. Um, Ms. Montenegro is our team mom. We call her Mama Jean. She actually came and saved our program, and I'm gonna let her give you a little, um, her spin on what she's done. She's been with me since day, day one, when we were struggling trying to find out how we were gonna get to a playoff game in Phoenix. Oh, also, I'd like to let you know our first year, we, uh, the Knights, actually won the Great West Championship, which is composed of teams from Las Vegas, San Diego, and the Phoenix area. Uh, we went 10 and 1 Three minutes. with all the Valley kids. Mr. Mr. Johnson, sorry to interrupt you. Your time is up, but thank you for your important comments. So now it's time for Mama Jean. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. May I call you that? I'm delighted to be here to talk to you just very briefly about our football team. It's a semi-pro football team, and as Sean said, when the kids get through playing in high school, that's it, unless they can go to a four-year school. And they work very hard. Uh, I've been to practice sessions. Uh, I read in the paper before their away game to whatever the town is outside of Phoenix, and the uh, coach, Sean was the assistant, and the other coach left, took the equipment that they had, shoulder pads, other stuff. And uh, Sean was saying, we're going to hang in there. We're not quitters. And I thought, I like that. I respect that. So I, I called him, and I said, I'd like to go on that trip. It was a long trip. And, uh, but I was really proud of the team and everything that they've done. They're dedicated players, they're knights on the football field, and they're gentlemen off of the football field. And I'm very proud of those young men. They treat me like a queen, so that's wonderful. <laughs> and uh, so I encourage you to come out and watch them. When's our next game? So this Saturday, this Saturday, 5 p.m. at Imperial High School. And uh, there are Calexico athletes on our team, as there are from all over the valley. Mm. So um, I can't say enough. I'm very proud of the team, <clears throat> very proud of the kind of young men that they're growing into. So let's support them. Well, thank you very much for your comments and your service. Thank you very much. All right. Um, the other two requests to speak is on specific items, so they need to wait when we get to those. Let's move on. That concludes our public comments. Now it's time, and it's uh, 8.25. It's time for general comments by council members. Council member Kim, sir, do you have any general comments? Yes, I do. 
Okay. Good evening. I think we everybody got kind of tired because of long, uh, long presentation. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do short. Well, uh, let's say almost two months since I was born in uh, December 4th, I was keep questioning our city moving toward the front to do, try to do the lasting things and why the living condition of the citizens in Kalexi go, going down. And one thing I realized that our city is paying attention a lot of big project. And I believe some projects going on and they pay, uh, paying attention on the time and money we invested to try to create the revenue to the city. But projects sometimes, uh, sometimes a success, sometimes fail like the theater. And the, we end up all the responsible. At the same time, what I'm understanding, our, our city, city, especially our job, job opportunity is better going down lower. And then I said, if we citizens doesn't make money, it, what is makes good to we have a big project around us, we don't have a job. Why? Because we are still competing with the Bailey White and the people from Mexicali coming in. So actually, whatever big project come around us, we don't get much benefit from there. I think this is time to see the, I'm not against the project, but we have to uh, put some effort to paying ourselves, humans, or citizens in the city of Kalesko who are living. We have to try to improve the job conditions or job abilities. And we have to, we have to take care of the, our children's education. And we have to take care of the protect more to our citizen, ourselves. If our citizen has job, if they have money to spend, that's necessary, we need to have a big project coming in, we're still gonna go buy, spend some money, it's gonna be a healthy city is gonna come. I believe for my focusing is to try to, That's my it's like three Don't minutes. Me. I try to creating the job, to looking for the job, and also uh, somebody uh, noticed probably through the newspaper, right now it's uh, global conditions to to world to United States to looking for the better condition some small size of the manufacturing they might come back to the United States because there's a lot of economic issues labels and uh, flight issues so we might can check that one to for the future to try to bring the more manufacturing job for Mr. us. Mr. Kim, you're beyond short, sir. Yeah, I think so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hodges has cut my, my, uh, no, my comments. No, those are important comments, but yeah. I just... Uh. So I have to, I have to, I believe Southern uh, Council person, they're gonna be agree with me. I'm looking, looking into, looking for the job and try to bring the more continuous job for really the people can rely on it. That's why one of the things I uh, threw the idea last time to create, a, uh, creating the, our own uh, private company to construction or developing to we can give the job for the citizens. Thank you, man. Councilman Kim. No Councilman comments. Castro. No comments. All right. Councilman Moreno. Yeah, real briefly, uh, I had the opportunity and I don't, uh, almost the balance of the council to meet and uh, County Supervisor uh, John Renison with uh, Juan Vargas uh, on Friday to go over uh, some of the issues, um, namely this uh, Port of entry. So we're working on it. We're trying to lobby uh, to make sure that we make progress on it. Uh, secondly, I went to the uh, Raul Ojeda benefit, uh, the gentleman that passed away in the, in the fire. It was pretty well attended, and hopefully um, they're getting through some tough times. Um, also, real briefly, uh, maybe this should go to the Planning Commission, and that is the, uh, the truck route or the trucks on 98. I think. Um, we may have discussed it, but some residents have brought up to my attention that they're, they're traveling pretty fast through the through 98. I know it's yes, a state route, yes. uh, namely by the high school and by the uh, by the by the uh, 
Camarena Junior High. And if there's any way that we can divert that traffic or, or take a look into something uh, to move them out of that area. Very good. And maybe just travel the cold road. Yeah, we can push that over to Plyde and have them take a look. Okay. At it. That's all I have, Mr. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Councilman Moreno. Uh, just one comment or, or an announcement. I sit on the ICTC uh, Commission, and uh, on Thursday, January 24th, at 3 to 6 p.m., I don't know the official name, it's the I IID office in El Central. Jen, does anybody know what street it's on? Broadway? Or? Broadway. Broadway, thank you. At 3 to 6 p.m., uh, they will have uh, the unmet needs meeting. What that is is an opportunity for all residents that rely heavily on public transportation to come to this commission and voice their concerns and, and get us to pay attention to certain things and hopefully that in a priority list later will be developed so that we can uh, correct some of these concerns. So it is to the public's interest, especially if you use public transportation, to come to that meeting. Once again, it's at 3 to 6 p.m. this Thursday at the IID office in El Centro. Okay, that concludes our council comments. Let's move on to the consent agenda. Is there, we have only two Mayor, items. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, yes I sir. I thought we were starting a new uh, item, which was city manager's comments, but I will oh, delay. Yes. What now? Oh, there it is in big black bold <laughs> letters. No, by all means, okay. let's hear from you, Mr. City I Manager. I think one of the things we wanted to do, Council has requested was that we provide uh, some of the comments that on what the city is doing so that the people coming to the meetings could get an idea as to what are the things that, that, that we're working on. We're also going to be putting a lot of this information onto our website so the community uh, can take a look and see what's happening in some of the uh, uh, different departments. I'm just going to pick a couple of them. Uh, police department, uh, they're planning to provide a presentation in February regarding traffic calming devices, which is the bumps and so on for, for, to slow down the traffic. So they'll be making a presentation in February. Uh, fire department, uh, they're going to be applying for a FEMA grant. Uh, we've talked about uh, applications for grants. They're going to be applying for a FEMA grant to help uh, purchase fire prevention and safety equipment and supplies. Uh, the grant is intended to target fire prevention, education, arson, and fire investigations. On the community development services, they've got a couple of events that are going on, the Mardi Gras um, dance uh, for seniors. Uh, February the 8th, Valentine's Day luncheon for seniors, February the 14th, which will be sponsored by Calmex Pharmacy. And uh, the 7th, February the 28th, they'll have their 7th annual daddy-daughter dance. Um, so certainly we invite everybody to participate. On a quick note, in reference to uh, our meeting uh, the mayor and I had with uh, Congressman Vargas on Friday, there's a couple of issues that we wanted to address with them. Um, and a couple of them, one was the casino. Obviously, we needed help. That's at the federal level, uh, and it's now at the Department of Interior, uh, which we were concerned and asked them to please intervene on that since uh, the director, Ken Salazar, has announced that he's leaving in, fe in February. So we're trying to figure out how that's going to impact our application up there, and so we asked him to intervene and try to move our application forward. We talked to him about funding for the border. We've talked about that a lot on how there's issues that have come up in the border and uh, that we have to take care of, but yet there's no funding. So we asked him to take a look and see what funding is available for us uh, so that we can go after. Uh, in reference to the, uh, one of the major projects we're working on, of course, is the Grand Plaza project. Uh, if any of you will go out there, uh, they've already started working on rough grading and compaction on the parking lot area, and they're working on fine um, uh, grading uh, for phase one, which is the first phase out there. And as of yesterday, they started uh, removing the hazardous waste, which a lot of you are aware of, that was over at the gun club, and that requires certain procedures to, to move forward in eliminating that hazardous waste. It actually has to be removed and taken to specific uh, dump sites uh, here in, in, the, in the U.S. There are some that are limited because they're high in hazardous waste. 
Um, and then the, the last item that I'd like to just report on is that we hope in the next 30 days to be before you, or not to be before you, but actually bid out the uh, six million gallon water tank that was uh, impacted during the earthquake. And we hope that that will be out within the next 30 days. And what that will do is it will provide us with a six million gallon tank, which will replace the one and three million gal gallon tanks that we currently have therefore moving us from 8 million gallons to 10 million gallons and giving us better capacity. Thank you. Well done, City Manager. Thank you uh, for informing the public on those matters. All right, we do now move to the consent agenda. Uh, there are two items. Is anyone requesting in pulling one item or an item? I move that we approve both. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right. So we're approving, it's been motioned, we're approving both items, please vote. Okay, all right, that's unanimous with four of us present. Let's move on to new business, item number three. That pertains to, whoa, Councilman Kim. We have a few appointments here, sir. Where do you stand on this, sir? Yeah, I believe a uh, certain commissioner I couldn't have concluded yet. So uh, planning commissioner and business improvement district, financial advisory board, I have to be tabled for the next meeting. Then the Beautification Commission, I appoint Maria Juarez. Uh, she couldn't be here today. Okay. Economic Development Commission, Ludi Maldonado. The Police Commission, Arturo Rioseco. He was here a while ago, but I think he had to go. The Recreation Commission, uh, Jesus Roja, I think Mr. Rojas. Would you stand up to let the people know? I think most of the people know you. I believe, I believe he could bring the last of a benefit for the community and uh, our children. Thank you. Police Commission, uh, I did it. Thank you. Yeah, Personal Commission, Grace Cervantes. Uh, this is a, a Teachers Union member, oh, yes. then I believe that she can do the, make sure our the, uh, employees get the right steps to treat with the personal the commissions. And the library board, uh, Miguel Lopez, he couldn't be here today. Uh, historical commission, Hilda Bowen, I think she's here. Thank you. The finance, uh, okay, street naming committee, Suhei Kesada. She couldn't be here today neither. So again, the, the ones that are outstanding are Mr. Kim. The recreational commission, uh, recreation, uh, no, the planning commission, oh. and the business improvement district, okay. and financial advisory board. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving to item number four. Is that correct? Uh huh. I have. I don't have four. I have four A. There's four a, a four and a, and a four B. A four A and a B. Oh, they divided it up. Okay. Electrical hall appeal. All right. So I have here for four A. I have appointment to the appeals hearing board. And that's a whole city council appointment. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Hutch. Yes, sir. I'd like to have some kind of a question to the city manager because I had a complaint from the people. They didn't know about the advertisement and the positions especially uh, housing authority and they were ever i believe they were advertised only with uh, other commissioners with the city council commission individual commission together the people had the perceptions that oh, city city 
the council gonna uh, name the individual like uh, what we did uh, the other one, but this one has like a whole council board. Council. So a lot of people they didn't they did uh, they didn't have a chance to, to apply apply this one. They they had kind of like they are confused it. So is there any chance? Uh, maybe we can have a, a final uh, advertisement. Yeah, if, that you, we if can you'd like to delay it, city manager, so that we could put it into the paper. It was on the website and and uh, posted. But if you'd like to have it also in the newspaper, we can certainly do that. Um, I know that that's the case with the housing authority, the appeals board. Uh, Gabby, did, is that the same situation with the appeals board website and posting, or did that go in the paper? No, that was just the website and posting. Okay. Okay, so we could put both of them in the paper if you'd like. The appeals board is a little tougher to get because they have to have certain credentials, but certainly we can do that if yeah, you'd like. Yeah, but uh, I think we are, our town is not uh, only the computer, uh, computerized uh, life here. A lot of people, they rely on the newspaper or here by and uh, physical advertisements. So I think uh, only advertisement in the website is not enough for our communities. Like. Th this will not stop the commissions from, from moving on and taking care of work. So if you'd like to do that, that we can do that. I, I concur with Councilman Kim on that. Fellow Councilman? Yes. Yes. Mr. Moreno? Yeah. Councilman Moreno? Mm -hmm. yes. All right, then. Then we will uh, take that table that for the next. By Is that for Councilman 4A Kim. only or? 4A. For both? For, for both yeah, yeah, I think it's both. Even, both. even like Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez said it's very the that's what need the certification, but still we open, we might can do it together too next time. All right, so you are also including four, a and B. four, uh, four B, yeah, sir. A and B. Uh, making the following appointments to the Calexico Housing Authority Board. Yeah. Okay, we do have some comments on that. Uh, let me see here, and he's right up there waiting, uh, Mr. John Romo. Yes, uh, yes sir. But Please state your. Uh, for the record, um, my name is John Romo. I'm a, a resident of uh, Calexico. Um, <clears throat> on the previous board meetings, council meeting, I don't know, am, is this audible? It's somewhat. It's not the best, <clears throat> but I don't know what the answer is. On your last council meeting, yes. I provided each council member. Yes. All right? enough backup material with my qualifications, my certifications, and along with it, with an attachment from the community about my qualifications. I'm pretty sure that Mr. Kim or any other city council had, had the chance to look into the advertisement bid. And I don't appreciate waiting here all night and this is I'm part of the assembly. I'm one of your constituents. And I find this a little bit rude. You were given backup material well in advance. You should have publicized it then. You shouldn't have had this put in the agenda. This is no disrespect to you, but I have to voice my concerns. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes, yes. Uh, Please pay close attention to the material that you're giving on. Me, That's all I ask. Let, let me uh, throw this out. Uh, this particular one, was, but, it uh, it, was it advertised in the me, same sir, way? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, go ahead. You know, I don't want my, my minutes to oh, be Oh, that's over. right. You have your minutes. I'm sorry for interrupting. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, uh, it's going to go into... You're going to publicize the positions. Is that, am I in the correct understanding? Yes, that's what the direction has been. All right. Okay, so you had two weeks, three weeks to do that. Uh, number two, um, okay, I'll, I'll await the council's uh, direction. All right, Mr. Romo. Sorry for your, uh, we understand your frustration. No, no, I understand. What I do understand from the council, it is what it is now, not what it should have been before. Oh, I'll ponder on that one. Okay. 
All right, thank you, Mr. Rome. Sorry. All right, let's uh, move on to item number five. That's me, no, ladies I, and gentlemen. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Cuevas, that's all. That's right. Go right ahead, sir. You are, you are uh, given three minutes. Three minutes. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Vincent Cuevas. I live here in Calexico. Uh, honorable city council members. I think one of the appointees, I'm going to go off track, but one of the appointees given by Kim lives in El Central. Oh. Grace Cervantes. Yes, but she's working in school district. As long as she's working in the collection, they have a resident. I believe they either work or they live, or here. live here, sir. Oh, really? I, yeah. Well, that makes it easy. Uh, my next point is uh, I, I would like to say that I, I implore you to appoint John Romo for uh, Housing Authority Board. Um, he has good communication skills with the tenants. He is a tenant of the Coletsco Housing. He knows the ins and outs of the housing regulations, and I think he's overqualified, and I think you should appoint him, and that's about it. Thank you, Mr. Cuevas. Thank you. Okay, that is, uh, we're through with those comments. Moving now to item number five. And this is an appointment by myself, Mayor Pro Tem Hodge, to the Sales Tax City Citizen Advisory Committee, better known, ladies and gentlemen, as Measure H. It's my pleasure that I am appointing Guillermo Hermosillo uh, on that board. So thank you very much for offering your service, Mr. Hermosillo. That's right, let's give it up for Mr. Hermosillo. Give him a line. Let's move on to item number six. A very important item, ladies and gentlemen. Those are all important. Uh, a requested action. To, uh, is this the proper background, <coughs> Mr. Mayor? Read, uh, read this one. Authorized city manager upon review and approval of the city attorney to amend and extend existing agreement between the city of Calexico and the Calexico New River Committee approved on June 4th, 2012, to provide professional services to complete a number of tasks, including, but not limited to, the first phase one of the New River Improvement Project under phase 1B, extension contem contemplates comp compensation for services provided from November 1st, 2012 through April 30th, 2012. 13. We read the recommendation. Mayor Pro Tem, uh, we would like to take this opportunity as long as we have the director for the New River Absolutely. Uh, Committee, Inc., Mr. Miguel Figueroa, to maybe give us a little bit of an update as to where they're at. We certainly are recommending this item. Good evening, um, council members, Mayor Pro Tem Hodge, city manager, city attorney, city staff. Uh, basically, uh, what we've been doing since the month of May, since we came in contract with the city of Calexico, is to provide assistance in order for the city uh, to move ahead on the specific project area that you mentioned, um, Councilman Hodge, which is the development of the Calexico River Parkway and bike path um, here in the west side of town in between uh, the Calexico Airport and the, the 300 plus west, high, west, um, west uh, side homes here in Calexico. But basically what we've done is provide project management, administrative, advisory, education and outreach assistance uh, to, mis to Mr. Nick Servin who is the public works director and he is the project contract administrator. Uh, basically, if we recall, what you have in front of you is a chronological summary of everything that's happened since 2005 to this day 
in terms of securing funding for the project and making sure that we deliver it to the people. Uh, one of the things uh, that we've advocated for as a nonprofit since 1999 was to deliver what the people asked for, and they asked for a river parkway, a green belt in the west side of town next to the, where the new river is right now. Basically what happened in May, two, in May 25th of 2012 was that our efforts paid off. A strategic plan was adopted here in the council chambers uh, by the California-Mexico Border Relations Council. This effort was an, an effort that uh, went into a, a two-year period collaboration not only between the city of Calexico, the county of Imperial, our elected officials, Cal EPA, and the Regional Water Quality Control Board. Uh, for the first time ever, all the parties came together to create this plan that provides specific recommendations that we need to deliver. One of them, which is probably the most important for us here in Calexico and our people, is a solution to the contamination uh, in the west side of town. As we know, we get the, the sludge of the contamination. Uh, it's identified in the plan as ground zero here in Calexico that we need to take care of. So in the early stage of 2011, uh, given the funding through the grants that were secured by Congressman Filner and Assemblyman Perez, uh, the city came in contract with ERM. ERM, since 2011, has been leading the efforts uh, to provide the preliminary, preliminary engineering and planning for the River Parkway project. And that is where we step in. And uh, this is one of the recommendations, such as the city manager said, that we want to continue to provide the services as a nonprofit and as a partner for the city of Calexico to continue to uh, deliver the project and make sure that it does not uh, hold back or stall, but in the contrary, that it continues to make progress. Um, at this time right now, I am pleased to say that we are working very closely with the Colorado River Basin Regional Water Quality Control Board to secure additional funding through the State Water Board to make sure that our project is not delayed and it continues to move forward. We want to develop a cost analysis that actually tells us what, is, what are the best alternatives to create the disinfection facility and conveyance structure that's needed and that was agreed on by all government authorities and the community. Having said this, um, I please urge you to consider this recommendation and please make a note that uh, my committee continues to work with n newly elected Congressman Juan Vargas and Assemblyman Manuel Perez uh, since, since we've, we've been doing for the past years now, not only uh, creating a, an assembly bill, a law that got passed in October of 2009 that allowed us to be where we're at right now. We co-sponsored that with the city of Calexico. We are looking to continue to do the same this year in 2013. In order to do that, we need to continue to um, receive your support as you have so far because we are confident that we will continue to make progress and we'll be glad to share uh, more updates in the near future. Um, I want to thank Councilman Hodge for being appoint appointed um, by you fellow council members to sit in my, on my board of directors and he in a way is the voice of the city on my board and conveys the messages and actions that we take um, at my committee to you and the rest of the community. So um, having said this, um, if there are any questions, I'll be glad to answer them at this moment. Okay, fellow councilman. Yes, councilman I have some questions. So that, uh, I believe I'm the only one who never had uh, heard about the project. The rest of the councilmen was sitting here so, uh, the, the, uh, familiar with this project. Uh, one thing is, is that uh, for the veganers have built some facility to taking care of the bad water, uh, the, the pollution, polluted water, or are you looking for the, we're looking for the more source of the more water? Okay, we want to deliver a parkway. We need to make sure that the contamination found is treated properly mm -hmm. in the best way so it does not affect those that may come in touch with, in the vicinity of the park that we're going to create. So to answer your question, yes, uh, as part of the conveyance uh, facility and disinfection facility, they're going to be part of the River Parkway. We are doing um, due diligence, um, ERM, in terms of doing the preliminary engineering and planning, and us, like I mentioned, trying to secure additional dollars to make sure that all analysis 
and feasibility studies are, are conducted to make sure that the contaminants are addressed. And uh, given the opportunity, Mr. Kim, and knowing that you're the new um, council member, um, I would like to share with you at a, at a different occasion when you believe uh, pertinent all the information and the work that we've done uh, in recent years. So I believe we have some fun issues there. The, is that any, we spend a lot, how, how many percent the fund we spend it for the analyzing on the study things? Okay, um, so, so basically uh, the money that was secured in 2005 by Congressman Filner uh, was $3.2 million. Mm -hmm. uh, that required a 20% matching fund. And there, I want to make, uh, uh, make it clear that that funding was secured from the Department of Transportation. Uh, so, so this is a unique project that for the first time ever the DOT and Caltrans are dealing with a parkway project and bike path. So having said that, in 2009, right when we were ready to present Assembly Bill 1079, uh, extensive conversations were, uh, uh, took place with the California Natural Resources Agency. This agency was the one that provided the 20% matching funds so the federal money could be liberated and put into use for the project. So having said that, uh, the, 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 full, um, the, the, the lump sum is administered by the city of Calexico and is uh, being provided by Caltrans and by the uh, CNRA, which is the California Natural Resources Agency, just like I mentioned. Having said this, ERM put together and prepared a scope of work. And in this scope of work, it's outlined the specific amount of money that's gonna be going for each service. Um, like I mentioned, I'll be happy to share all that information with you uh, so, uh, so, we all, so you know specifically how much money is being allocated for that. Um, since this is federal funding, I wanna make it clear for everybody that this only applies uh, for anything related to NEPA, not CEQA. So one of the reasons that we're seeking additional uh, funding in cooperation with our state regional water board is so we can do everything that's related to CEQA. So that's why you need more money. Exactly. But uh, how is that any chance so we can have some, how much budget we've spent it for the, until now? Oh yes, and I wanna make a clarification. Uh, we need that additional money that I mentioned to in order to continue the, par uh, the parkway project. <laughs> The, the, the recommendation that's uh, in front of you uh, today is for the services of the Calexico New River Committee to continue to assist the city of Calexico. And that specifically is tagged in the state money. Out of the 20% matching funds, only 25% of that can be used for planning. And that is where uh, the city has been under a reimbursement uh, service with the state uh, providing and paying for the services of uh, my work and that of the other consultants. So, so it's, it's, it's specifically, um, it's, 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 it's uh, in, in, in yeah, the budget. Yes, so my specific question is how much we spent it then? How many percent? On the, what? On the preparing to all the project right now, until now. Uh, so, so far, the latest, the latest numbers, yes. uh, based on the reimbursements the city has received, out of the 25% that I'm referring, mm -hmm. we have not even reached 15% uh, of that. Not, not even no, so, so okay, the, the, the thing that we're doing is we want to leave yeah. contingency funds to make sure that we deliver um, what we're being asked to do. Okay, the other my question is, so we're gonna, uh, uh, we're gonna have uh, make the park and the uh, same time the park is, you believe the park is gonna be uh, helping us to pur uh, purify into contamination waters. Exactly, and uh, we've, do, we've uh, created a preliminary concept uh, that you can find in the, um, I, I believe is the, the last page, or, or before, one, the, one to the last page, as to how the area on the west side is right now and how we envision it to be in the near future. And uh, yes, I mean, the, at, the, at the end of the day, we're delivering what the people have asked us to do. I had some kind of, I believe that recently they found some of the pro, uh, system for the purifying the water instead of the build some big the project, they call the poo glue. They're using some bacteria to uh, clean the contamination. Very, very little cost to help us to very, uh, by what I'm understanding, like even less than 10% of the, the cost of the building. So they're gonna help us to clean the, 
the uh, purifying the water from the contaminations. They have a, a pool glue, I think you might can get this information that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And, and, and as far as, as uh, our project is now recognized by the state of California and uh, the federal government as a whole. Um, and as a result of that, um, we are working very closely right now with US EPA to bring a pilot project to the city of Calexico. It's still in the works, uh, but it, that's an alternative that just uh, recently surfaced, and we're, we're very confident that's going to support our efforts. Councilman so you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to make the park over there, and then we can go fishing there? I'm not sure about fishing, but um, it, it's going to be in clean the future. enough for everybody. In the, in the future. You can Thank fish, you. but you can't eat the fish. OK. Because <laughs> they glow a lot. <laughs> Councilman Castro. No, that's OK. I'm, he already make all the answers. Thank you for Questions that. Questions and answers. Thank you, Miguel. <laughs> Council Moreno. I move that we approve uh, this recommendation. Yes. I second that. Or can I do something? No. Okay. No, I cannot. Yes, okay. You can. Yes, you can. You can. Oh, I can second? You, okay. Before you. Oh, did you do it before me? Did you second before yes. me? Yes. All right. So, duly noted, Councilman Castro has second this motion. Council, ready to vote? All right. Press your fingers on those buttons. It's getting late, Bill. <laughs> I missed my novella. All right. Nice to see that. Thank you, Mr. Figueroa. Excellent work. Young man has done an outstanding job with Nick Servine. Okay, let's move on. And the last, I believe the last item is item number seven. Let's see, uh, what is, is this no action, it's just informational, is that correct? Yes. yes. Acknowledge. So we're acknowledging uh, our, the file on the business license delinquency report for the month of December 2012 and provide comment and or direction to staff as deemed appropriate. That if you choose or all you have to do is say acknowledge. So I leave it up to the council. Do we acknowledge it? I think I had some conversation with Mr. Rodriguez about these issues. Uh -huh. Probably I believe the Mr. Rodriguez brings some idea to correcting the list. Probably if he was mentioning it, some, some of the list is, you know, is not there yet. I mean, they're already not coming. So I think so we have some issues, uh, discussion, some idea. I think uh, staff's going to be able to, next meeting, be able to find out the more uh, clean list, but uh, I believe just like last time I was mentioning, so we need to find this, whatever left of the people. Spe especially this time is a good time for deal with the merchants. If they have some issues, so they are delinquent. Who, whoever right now, we can create some kind of a, like debt solving pro program, which is whatever they have owed to us, we give them certain payment plan. But for the future, this, this year's license it should be updated. So we, for the we have to, for the future. That way we can solve this one problem. Okay. Appreciate your, your effort there, Councilman Kemp. Anyone else? Or is this an acknowledgement by the council? Knowledge received. Knowledge received. Knowledge received. Ladies and gentlemen, it is approximately 9.04. This meeting is adjourned. Go home to your families. Rest up, eat well.